On our last video, we talked about diagnosis, management, and prevention of bacterial vaginosis, one of the most prominent vaginal infections. If you haven't watched that yet, you may want to consider starting with it by clicking on the link in the description section of this video for a better follow-up. In continuation, today we shall be looking at how to diagnose, manage, and prevent trichomoniasis and vulvovaginal candidiasis in females. Let's dive in. Welcome back guys, it's another advertisement for you where we enjoy how to learn it and we learn how to enjoy it. A platform where we demystify the to diagnosis and the epidemiology of diseases. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, you know where the subscribe button is. Just go right down there and click on the button. Uh, what's button? What's button? Sorry. You know where the subscribe button is? Button. You, you know where the subscribe button is? Just go right down there click on the subscribe button. And make sure that you click on the notification bell as well so you won't miss out on anything that we do for you. Okay, we got you straight into the subject matter. That's what we have on site our reporter, please into form, who is going to be giving us a report or a presentation on how to diagnose, manage, and prevent vaginal candidiasis. Vulva vaginal candidiasis is a yeast infection of the vagina and tissues at the opening of the vagina referred to as the vulva. Candida albicans is most often the causative agent of this infection. The infection usually results from an imbalance between the host immune system, the amount or type of lactobacillus and candida present, as well as the ongoing virulence mechanisms of the candida species found in the vagina. All of this may be influenced by some behavioral factors, genetic factors, underlying chronic diseases, hormonal changes, and to some extent, diet. Candida albicans is naturally present in the vagina of most women as a commensal and so does not cause any harm as long as their numbers are kept low by the abundant presence or action of lactobacillus and the immune system. However, some activities or conditions may cause an overgrowth of the fungi thus leading to vulvovaginal candidiasis. Now, let's look at some factors that can actually predispose a female to develop vaginal candidiasis. 1. Douching 2. Use and misuse of antibiotics. 3. Hormonal changes. 4. Dominant lactobacillus species present in the vagina. We've already extensively discussed the first four factors in our previous video on bacterial vaginosis. If you haven't seen that yet, just click on the link in the description section of this video to watch our previous video for better understanding. The same explanation or rationale applies for vaginal candidiasis. Let's move to point number 5. Choice of panties or underwear. Candida, likewise, most fungi tend to thrive very well in warm, moist areas. So if a woman consistently wears the kind of pants or carries out activities that generates heat and keeps the heat trapped at the level of the vagina, it would eventually create a favorable environment for candida to grow and this can lead to candidiasis. Nylon pants can easily give rise to such because of the nature of the fabric which does not allow air to pass through its fibers. Wearing tight-fitting pants can also trap generated heat and provoke the growth of candida in the vagina. Pure organic cotton panties or underwear, on the other hand, have tiny openings which make them very breathable so in effect, your vagina gets all the ventilation it needs to prevent the growth of yeast. In addition, cotton panties are more comfortable, more absorbent and less irritating to the skin. However, they may not be as stylish as nylon or polyester panties, but oh come on, why should you prefer style over comfort and good health? Duh. Point number 6. Diabetes, HIV or any other chronic condition that may compromise your immune system. Candidiasis is usually classified as an opportunistic mycosis. It takes advantage of a weakened immune system to establish itself. However, this does not by any chance imply that only people with diabetes and HIV infection can get recurrent vaginal candidiasis. Symptoms of vaginal candidiasis usually include 1. Persistent vaginal itching and sores which actually worsens as you scratch your vulva and vagina. Symptom number 2. It usually comes with a dense white curd or cottage cheese-like vaginal discharge as seen on the displayed picture. Symptom number three, burning discomfort in the vagina. Number four, pain or discomfort when urinating. And number five, unusual pain during sexual intercourse. Both medical and behavioral complications may arise from vaginal candidiasis. These include one, recurrent vaginal candidiasis, 
Yeah, one of the complications that may arise from having episodes of vaginal candidiasis is that you may end up having more episodes of vaginal candidiasis. Two, the area around your vagina might become inflamed, sore, or cracked, leading to a skin infection. Three, the vaginal itches, burning, and discomfort that you may experience is no respecter of place, person, or time. As such, vaginal candidiasis can be really embarrassing. In addition, the fact that you can already foresee unusual pain during penetration can actually kill your mood for sexual intercourse. Point number four, a pregnant woman with vaginal candidiasis may transmit the yeast to her child during delivery. Point number five, recurrent vaginal candidiasis in severe cases can lead to infertility. Vaginal candidiasis is diagnosed in the laboratory by identifying yeast cells and at times pseudohyphae indicative of candida on gram-stained vaginal smears as seen on the displayed pictures. It is also possible to have a co-infection with bacterial vaginosis, that is, you can see yeast cells alongside gram-variable cocobacilli and clue cells. Vaginal candidiasis is usually treated with nystatin ovules, econazole ovules, miconazole or clotrimazole cream as per the medical doctor's prescription. This was Priestley to phone reporting live from... Ah, forget it. Back to you, Coco and Tony, in the laboratory. You don't know the report so, so soon. I'm on lunch break now. I can't say much. Probably take something else. Like, I don't know, talk about trichomoniasis or something. Just go! Trichomoniasis happens to be the most common sexually transmitted non viral disease worldwide. It is caused by Trichomonas vaginalis, an actively motile protozoan that can be easily seen in the lab by observing the wet mount of a vaginal discharge from an infected woman as shown on the displayed video. It may also be seen in the urine of infected women. Typical symptoms include a thin vaginal yellowish or greenish discharge, pain, itching and a burning sensation in the vagina, lower abdominal pain and pain during intercourse. Yep, the symptoms are very much similar to that of vaginal candidiasis and so a definitive lab diagnosis must be arrived at before any treatment measure is taken. Trichomoniasis is usually treated with metronidazole or tinidazole as per a medical doctor's prescription. If left undiagnosed or untreated, complications that may arise from trichomoniasis include 1. Increased risk of contracting HIV and other STIs. 2. Pelvic inflammatory disease which may give rise to fallopian tube blockage and infertility. 3. Premature births and low bed weight for pregnant women. As earlier mentioned, trichomoniasis is sexually transmitted and so guys, you know what that means, right? You all know what we have to do if we really want to avoid contracting this disease. Wait for it, wait for it. Don't have sex. Huh? You don't mean it? Uh, okay, have it a little. But make sure it's protected sex or better still, just get married and do it the right way, Door. Moving on. Now, it may interest you to know that trichomoniasis is not only sexually transmitted as earlier established or as taught in many schools. As a matter of fact, some researchers have been able to establish evidence of non-sexual transmission of trichomoniasis. An article by Subita Renu and Joitna in the Indian Journal of Sexually Transmitted Diseases and AIDS states that trichomoniasis was always believed to be a sexually transmitted disease. But an extensive literature search showed that non-sexual transmission can occur through formites like towels and toilet seats and from swimming pools. In a cross-sectional study in Zambia published in PLOS One, adolescent virgin girls showed a high prevalence of trichomoniasis, the reason for which was found to be the sharing of bedding water. Two children aged less than 12 years got the infection from their mother by sharing bath towels. A case report by Kelly Bishop describes a probable non-sexual transmission of trichomoniasis from grandmother to granddaughter. The links of all of these articles are found in the description section of this video for more information. All of this highlights the need to improve on personal hygiene and avoid the sharing of personal care items as additional measures to prevent trichomoniasis. That was a big finish from Priestley to Fall as we wrap up our video on how to diagnose, manage and prevent vaginal infections. Hope you did learn something. Well, if you didn't, it's okay, it's okay. Just relax, go on our comment section and put up a comment on what went wrong or what just didn't go right. That's it and done. You could also put up a comment or a suggestion on maybe a subject matter you would like us to tackle on our subsequent videos. And if you do that, 
we shall get to level 10. Our next video, we shall be addressing semen analysis. So, if you want to know more about how to handle sperm count, the significance of sperm count, uh, sperm morphology, and the kind of attributes that a sperm should have in order to increase its chances of being able to fertilize an egg, and so on and so forth, uh, please, you don't want to miss that video because it's going to be very interesting, very intriguing, and so uh, very, very intriguing, intriguing, very intriguing, and of course, if you really don't want to miss it, you know what to do, right? Just subscribe to this channel, click on the notification bell and of course don't forget to give us a thumbs up for, for this video and we shall make sure that you are laboratory. Laboratory.